Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I am going to discuss two advanced segmentation techniques. Continuing from the previous lecture where I discussed some segmentation techniques which were quite basic. For example, I discussed different types of thresholdings and then some edge-based segmentation techniques. Today I am going to discuss more advanced segmentation techniques in the sense that they require higher level knowledge from the images and from also from the mathematical perspective. First of all, I am going to start with active contour models. These models are quite famous for image segmentation and also for image understanding. And additionally, they are suitable for both 2D image analysis and 3D image analysis as well. So an active contour model, as the name suggests, it is some kind of model which will try to model a contour or an edge and it will be an active model. An active model means it will not be a stationary one but it will be changing with time. So as the image progresses, as the frames progresses, as the time progresses, it will change its shape, it will try to maneuver itself into something or some area of the image so that a particular information can be extracted from the image. Active contour models are also called snakes because they have a shape like a snake. Just like the snake moves and for example settles in the corner or at the edge of some wall, these active contour models will do something like that. So, an active contour model is an energy minimizing spline. So, they are splines and they will have some energy. And we are going to find a region, a place where their energy will be minimized. So, this energy is going to depend on multiple factors. For example, to name a few, the shape of the snake and the location in the image where that snake is present and there are many other factors which I am going to explain in a bit. Once the snake has settled somewhere that minimization will correspond to the desired image property. So these models they don't solve the entire problem of finding contours in an image because they are not going to find an edge or they are not going to segment out an object on their own. They require help from some other mechanisms as well. The first mechanism they are going to get help from is the user itself. The interaction with a user is quite an important factor over here. But there are ways to automate these things which you will understand in a bit. So the first thing is they require interaction from the user. The second thing is they require some higher level image understanding process. They need to understand that what they want to do. What is the shape of the image? What is the scenario? How the gray levels are changing? Where possibly there can be edges? Where possibly there can be local minimas so that they can settle over there? And additionally, they can use some information from image data adjacent in time or space that is they are going to analyze the whole image and they are going to use the data of that image so the interaction with the user it must specify an approximate starting shape and position of the snake i can give you a simple example through which you can understand this thing most of you must have used some kind of photo editing software for example a photoshop in that photoshop you can have a lasso tool if i can write it over here like this that lasso tool is nothing but an active contour model if you remember or if you work with those photo editing softwares you must know that for example if you are using that software to select this image of the robot over here then you can use a lasso tool to select it but for selection you need to have a selection path around it so what you are going to do do you are going to use a lasso tool you are going to click somewhere near this robot and the selection tool will start and then later on you will click somewhere over here somewhere over here 
and you are going to keep on clicking at the boundaries or at the contours of this robot and the lesser tool what will it will do it will automatically generate a snake or an active contour model and it will move that model around this periphery around this edge and it will create a selection path like this so that you can easily select this robot otherwise it won't be possible to select this robot as a whole because it has a complex shape and you cannot exactly move a pen around it. So what a magnetic lasso or a lasso tool will do, it will require some interaction from the user to get some information about the image or the areas where the energy of the snake can be minimized. So you are providing those points and as you'll provide, keep on providing those points, it will generate a snake between those two points and will automatically minimize the energy. And over here, the minimization of energy will occur at the contour, at the boundary or at the edge. So definitely the whole process is going to use some a priori knowledge based on some information coming from the image so that the snake can be pushed towards an appropriate solution. For example, if you start a snake from this point and you specify an end point over here, then the snake will try to settle on this contour like this. In the second image, you can see that snake after each iterative step, the snake will change its shape and it will try to settle on this edge. And after some iterations, you can see that snake has settled over here like this. So the energy functional, which is minimized, is a weighted combination of two type of forces, internal forces and external forces. So whenever something is moving, it is moving because of two forces, forces emanating from within that thing and the forces which are coming from the environment. So in the same way, a snake will move because of two type of forces, internal forces and external forces. The internal forces, they come from the shape of the snake. That what is the shape of the snake? What shape is desired? What points are desired in the image? So snake will try to move over there. For example, if you want to pick a glass of water, you know that where the glass is, you'll generate some forces, some internal forces, and you will move your hand because of those forces towards the glass and you will pick it up. So you have achieved your goal. In the same way, different criteria have been defined that snake should move towards such things. For example, a snake should move towards a line or an edge or a corner or something like that. So snake, the internal forces of the snake, they will move it towards those things. Whereas the external forces, they will come from the image or some higher level image understanding processes. For example, the interaction with the user, that is a higher level image understanding process. The user understands the image. So it will place the snake near the desired local minima, but the user cannot place the snake exactly at the desired local minima. If you can relate this with this word or this sentence with the example of the robot, which I gave you in the last slide, that is, you want to select this robot, then you can place the snake somewhere near it, but you cannot place the snake exactly at its boundary. So the information which you are providing to this active contour model is acting as a higher level knowledge. I am not going to go into the mathematical details over here because that will be out of the scope of this uh, video lecture. I have given you a pointer that what kind of external and internal forces are needed and there are different ways to model those forces. You can consult the reference text for details of modeling or the mathematical models of these snakes. Over here, I'm going to describe two examples. 
this one the image which you are seeing is quite a famous image it is coins image present in matlab's built-in image folder so what if we want to find all the edges present in this image and using those edges we want to segment out the background from the coins so we have to define a certain starting point for the snake so that after it starts it will try to settle down at the edges present in the image so how can we initiate a snake for example this black boundary represents the initial location of the snake or the initial location of the contour iteratively the model will work and it will try to change its shape and it will try to settle at the edges. If you'll run it, what will happen? The snake will settle at the edges and you will know that where the edges are and then you can easily segment out the image. So this will be the final output. This thing can very easily be implemented, especially on MATLAB because there are built-in functions available and I will definitely give you some assignments and some pointers towards implementing this thing in MATLAB in practical session of this lecture. Additionally, if we want to segment out one particular object, not all, then what can be done? If you can see in this image, simple thresholding will easily fail because some objects are lighter than the background whereas some objects are darker than the black background so we need to have some other kind of segmentation technique we can also use uh, an adaptive thresholding technique that can also work but it will be time consuming and it might not yield as good results as some advanced techniques can for example, we want to find one object which has been bounded by this blue box. This blue box or blue spline is representing the initial location of the snake. So after some iterative steps, what is going to happen? The snake is going to settle around the edges. Now it is not going to settle around all the edges present in the image, but it is going to settle at the local minima because the nearest edges, the nearest minima present around it is that of this object. So this will be the final contour shape and you can easily see that how an active contour model can segment out this object from other objects. But what is the initial contour? How you can automatically get this initial contour? It is a topic of another discussion. If you want to segment out all the objects present in the image like we did in the coins image, then you can have a contour, an initial contour at the outer borders of the image. But what if you want to segment out one particular object, then you'll have to do something else. For example, you might need an interaction from the user who can specify that my object which I want to segment out is somewhere over here after that snake will do its work furthermore this slide shows you two examples of real images on which active contour models have been utilized to segment out the complex shapes you can see that these shapes are not easy to segment out using any other technique but active contour models they are easily doing it so this is everything for active contour models. I haven't explained any mathematics involved in it. I'm again recommending that students who are willing to understand this thing a bit more, they should go towards the reference text and they can find a lot more detail over there.